What is up? It's your boy Petty, and we're back with another episode of Culture Vultures. And I am joined by my incomparable co host, Speed. How are you doing today, bro? Doing well, man. Happy New Year. How are you? I'm good. I'm good. You know, I'm ready to bring some positive energy today. Uh, we have a special guest. Uh, the second he sat down, I became the third best looking guy on the on the set today. But it's all good. It's all good. <laughs> Uh, we're happy, we're happy to be joined by Keith Powers today, actor, and has a lot of things going for him right now. So we're uh, we're appreciative that you're here today. How are you doing today, Keith? Man, I'm doing good. Pleasure to. I'm happy to be here. Thank y'all for Man, having me. I oh, appreciate you everything. popping up. You know, always means a lot. Oh, yeah, when I gotta get that. <laughs> I almost oh, left oh, oh. <laughs> It almost means a lot. It always means a lot. You know, when somebody you know acknowledge me and and the work I've done and the artists I I'm trying to become and, and invite me onto a platform like this. So, hell Man, yeah, man, yeah. shoot, and th that that's a uh, you know mutual respect there because we uh, you know w it feels like we were being acknowledged too, so that's a you know yeah. mutual love right there. We Hell appreciate yeah. you know having you. And we're gonna talk a little bit about you know um, your career and your path um, to where you're at right now, and mm -hmm. then also of course style and things that you care about. So mm -hmm. uh, hey, real quick though, what you do for New Year's? How, how was your New Year's before we get into oh, all that? Oh man, my New Year's was I I started off the year sick. So I didn't even have a New Year's. I, I watched the ball drop and drank some cider. Okay, okay. that's so, how I started off the year. Yeah, got sick so. during the holidays, going back home, but it was still cool. I, I it was kind of like a blessing in disguise. I like being in the house. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah, me too. I'm kind of like just watching the countdown. Especially to be now, real. inflation times ten. Yeah, there's just too much going on. Toilet sometimes. paper costs a lot. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. and that's yeah. A, honestly that's a crazy. Now I'm not like a super big fan. Of, you know that time because you know people would be yeah. wild and sometimes it's just a so, lot. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> but I, I I was cool. I was chilling, so that was cool. Okay, yeah, cool, cool, cool. Um. You know, before we actually get into your story, he actually reminded me. Let's talk about you know shoes that we got on foot today. You know, that's mm -hmm. a big a big thing these days. Right. And you know, everyone <laughs> yeah. came with some heat today. All of us came with some heat. Yeah. Today. Uh, what you got on today? Yeah, I got the uh, Travis Scott ones. What are the Cactus Jacks? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. I really like these ones. My girl got me these ones. So. Some slight. <laughs> yeah. Some hey, some slight. Some slight. slight. Some yeah, slight. Yeah. Hey, and you know what? Like the one thing about Jordans. Uh, Jordan ones too. They look better the more you wear them like that. Yeah. And I can tell that you've actually been wearing these. And that's they look yeah. No, oh yeah, when they look a little worn at the yeah. bottom. Yeah, I'm telling you that they look way better. It's a vibe. Yeah, exactly. I mean the Jordan ones is my favorite Jordan. So I will say too, Travis. Uh, I do feel like he made brown. A nice color for culture. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Honestly. Like I always top. talk about that. Like, that's the one thing. Like, I know that a lot, there's a lot of hype beats around, like, his yeah. stuff. But I mm -hmm. love that we're actually having something that's, like, fresh around, like, kind of, like, olives, olive color, yeah. you know, greens, like, military camo mm -hmm. color. Because those are the kind of, like, comfort zone, you know, the yeah. browns. Like, it's good to be fresh and be wearing brown at the same it's time. It's, like, <laughs> neutral but not neutral. Exactly. It's still, exactly. like, like an olive green is, like, a neutral color, but it's still a color. Mm -hmm. It's, like, you know. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. Like, it, he uses colors that you would, might be the same color as your pants. You know what I'm yeah, saying? Like, yeah, exactly. Uh, you know, uh, I like stuff like that. It's not too loud, but it's still like nice. A little splash of color, but it's not too like too crazy. No neon or something. Like, so what we got on today, Speed? Because I see you. Yeah, I see you. I want nice. you to know about these out just for you guys. I'm gonna actually give him the mic after I leave here. Okay. Okay. Yeah, that's that's you know, these are subtle the, flex. <laughs> these are the these are the Kobe Four. Joker Chaos Kobe Ford. Yeah. <laughs> Bro. Rest in peace, Original, Kobe. I, I think they're old. But yeah. like, you know, Michael had a lot of old Kobe's. He sent him the text. <laughs> no, those are cold. Those are cold. I, <laughs> I love the resurgence of the Kobe's too, like right yeah. now. Like this is the year, obviously, 2024. Nike was like, that's why you're 24. Day, we gotta have some I'm, I'm yeah. Yeah, Kobe's <laughs> every day, bro. <laughs> exactly. Like, you can't every have, day. <laughs> I fell in love with the Grinches recently. Which so, ones, the reverse? Uh, I like the reverse and the originals. They both hard. Okay, yes. So let me ask you this. Did you get the... <laughs> you I didn't get them, though. You don't open up a can oh, you didn't get them. I don't got so them. You didn't yeah. got I just love them. I like them. Yeah, I yeah. see them, Shit. I'm like, yo, Okay, hard. well, <clears throat> I mean, man. But check it. I'm going to hit... I'm gonna, we going to have to hit the Nike plug up with the new... With the plug, with the plug. plug. Yeah, yeah. Like, we got a sponsor that might be like... <laughs> I love that. Yep, we got to get that going. <laughs> yeah, yeah, no, I'm, I'm, like I said, I'm happy that the they're bringing the Kobe's back like that. Yeah, that's special for, for me because it's like it brings those memories back. From yeah. it might be rough, you know. I know you're a Kings fan, bringing some of the memories. Oh back. my <laughs> god, bro, <laughs> stop it. Yeah, yeah, man, we finally got it's two crazy. of us now. Right. Man, let's but get this full. It's bro. crazy. Yeah, no, it's 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 like hurtful memories, but like it's it's a love and hate relationship with like. Kobe and I think it really hit me once he died. Yeah, I was yeah. devastated. But I mean, uh, since he's retired, I was following him and just the work he was doing, like just after retirement, it was dope to see what he had emerging, Monster. and it was really inspiring. 
So like, you know, growing up, yeah, it broke my heart like yeah. crazy. But I mean, yeah. like that's, I mean, that's why we watch sports. The it's, passion, you know what I'm yeah, saying? Yeah, the it's, love it, it's it. like I, I can imagine. It's, it's. I'm on the other side of it, you know. Yeah. But I can imagine probably similar with probably you know Spurs fans with Celtics oh, fans. Sure. Like there's that hate for the team, but like you have that respect because they competed on the yeah. highest level, and yeah. you know. Uh, the best players usually, you know, best team usually left the the court. The, the players are, st- are still great, and it's still entertainment for us at the end of the day. You know what that I'm saying? Is a major, like, no major key. Like we we even if we we don't even notice, I think subconsciously we always still have respect for all the legends, <laughs> even if Max. you might, especially nowadays, you can just hop on Twitter and talk smack. But I mean, it's a little love in that as well. Yeah, exactly. In my opinion. Yeah. So. No, that's a good way to look at. It. That's yeah. a good way to look at it. Um, I got the I'm on your fives. Uh. Man, yes, I've been. He knows I've been. Man, wild. I've been no, wanting no, this for this a while. Man waiting. He's been trying to get these, bro. For real? Shows been, on shows. Yes, oh, I've been snap. going. I've been on a <laughs> <Congrats>. mission. <laughs> Thank you, Congrats. sir. As you know, as a sneakerhead, you yeah. know when you finally get that shoe. Yeah, it's your first pair of fives. You how you gonna spoil for me? I was just oh, about bad. to tell y'all. Oh, this is, my bad. This is I'm my sorry. First bro. pair of Air Jordan wow. fives. <laughs> Why is it your first pair? Why? So growing up, I always tell people my parents gave me everything that I need. But they didn't give me everything mm-hmm. I wanted. Yeah, of course. Yeah, yeah. So, <laughs> so and uh, I was a little bit less privileged on that side because yeah. my parents didn't really value sneakers like that. Got it. When they didn't know like the social, you know, construct yeah. of what, what that was Makes like because they didn't. It wasn't like that for them. Um, yeah. So f- when I got to the age where I could finally get sneakers, I started working back through the different Jordans that I missed and stuff like that. And you never got to the fives though. Yeah. Well, I wanted fives, but I, there were specific ones because it, I, shoes got to have the story is something that's important to me. Yeah, that makes sense. Um, and I wanted a, a sneaker that either I was like, man, it's, this is so fresh, I gotta have it, or I wanted ones that like I want that. Um, I really like. I saw growing up like the Fresh Prince fives. Yeah. So that's the ones I was after. And right. then I saw these, and I was like, "Yo, I finally have a pair cold. of fives I got on." Cold. So it made and them they, special. They super neutral too, so you could really like rock the hell out of those. Yes, I'm the type of guy that just wear my shoes to the ground. So like, once I get a new pair of shoes, I think I wear them like four or five times a week. I got to tell myself like, "Yo, I got to switch <laughs> it up." It's crazy. No, I, it's funny you say that. I'm the same way because um, I want to get some comfortable. I'm that guy who's like, yeah. I, if I find a meal I like uh-huh. at the restaurant, I'm going to keep getting it. That's me. That's me. <laughs> that is me. Uh, but also too, like what I've been kind of waiting to dead stock the undead stock these today. I just did that because I know once I wear them, I'm going to be wearing them all the time. Just the like time that. So yeah. So um, I want to talk a little bit about your career. You know, mm-hmm. um, we have a lot that we want to get through, but I wanted to ask, you know, when did you find that love or that passion for acting? Or, like, how did how did you stumble upon that? Or Yeah, I mean, when I first started, act, when I first got to L.A., uh, the first thing I did was I was a, I was signed to Wilhelmina as a model. So mm-hmm. the I, the <laughs> it was crazy. Life just be happening. It was really my agent, um, my old agent. She just basically asked me, you know, am I interested in acting? Have I ever thought about it? I said, I mean, yeah, like growing up, you know, growing up in Sacramento, you'll see like, you'll watch Disney Channel and see like a commercial about auditioning to be on That's So Raven. Yeah, and yeah, then you see them go through the little competitions and it's like, dang, I would love to do that, but it just seems so far out. Like it's just not. Like, a, almost unrealistic, huh? Yeah, it's just yeah. like, ain't no way. Nobody books these. Like people get lucky. It's just, it just doesn't happen. Yeah. But I told her I was like, you know, I was into like TV personality and like stuff like yeah. that, and 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 maybe even hosting. But after that, she kind of introduced me to this smaller agency, this boutique agency, and that's when I started like doing a lot of commercial auditions. But I, the love wasn't there yet. The love, the love got there when I started taking classes. For mm. When I started really, when I decided like, yo, I really want to act. And I really got into like studying and like jumping different classes and trying to learn the craft. Mm-hmm. I fell in love with it because I started looking at films and stuff differently. Yeah. And appreciating yeah. the art more. Yeah. How do you even decipher what class you want to take or decide? Man, that's the thing. <laughs> I mean, I've taken so many classes. I've probably taken like, since I've been in LA, I've probably been in like 12 different classes or 13 with multiple different coaches. You just never know. And then sometimes after a while, that class just don't do it for you anymore. It's because it's an art. It, I always say, and I always feel like there really is no finish line to it. It's like you stay in it and, and learn as much as, as for as long as you want, or you say, you know, I got what I needed, and let me let me let me apply it. You fu- it's funny that you say that because um, I remember when I heard about like Denzel mm-hmm. continue to take acting classes, and you're like, yeah. like Denzel has already done yeah. so much. 
you know, but it's there's always something that you can learn and or yeah. add to your bag, right? And and I think all the greats, you know, they have that about them that they're always continuing to try and improve, yeah. whether it be an athlete, right, a basketball player trying to give exactly add, add to their, you know, a jump shot yeah. or a post up game. You adding to your, you know, your um, your range, right? exactly. And Denzel is a man of the craft too, so I mean that's that's not surprising. Like he yeah, don't yeah. always put the work in, and I mean he he's on the stage too. He still does theater to this day, and like he really in love with it, and he really does it. So it's not even surprising. Honestly. Do, you, do you do theater at all? No, I don't. I, I I've done like showcases in the past, and like little plays here and there, and they're fun, dude. It's like it's like equivalent to. I always say a set and working on a movie is equivalent to being on a football team. Yeah. But, like, I do feel like the stage is equivalent to, like, a live game. Because mm, you yeah, got a yeah. crowd. Whatever you do on that stage, there's no, like, cut and start back again. It's just everything is in the moment, even the mess-ups. But that's just the art. That's the love yeah. in it. I've never really had, like, a passion for theater. But I think as I've gotten older and just appreciated art in general, I do think about it. But, um... It hasn't been like on the top of my priorities list, but I respect yeah. anybody that does mm. do a play. You know, you're doing a play in New York for a month. I mean, you, you I think, I think you like doing it every other day, or <laughs> yeah, yeah, <laughs> and, and, and you get different type you. of reactions, right? Because like we, mm -hmm. you, we look at, you know, at least from my experience, you know, go to a play on a weekend. That's when you have the largest crowd, mm -hmm. things like that. You might have to do a, you know, do that same play on a Thursday where there's four people right? in there. Are you, you gonna still be inspired to exactly. do exactly? You, know? you might not even be in the mood, but. <laughs> You know, you go out there and, and whatever you were feeling that day is you. That's you could use that on stage, and 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 the performance is just different every single night. I think that's dope and spontaneous. So it's something I think about. Yeah. But we'll see. Good yeah. question. Good question. Yeah. Um, how about this? Let me let me ask you. What was the the film or like part that you got that you feel like your life changed? Like like whether it be opportunities opening up mm -hmm. or your perspective changed, things like that. Yeah. No, I think it was. I think it was straight out of Compton initially. I think that that just showed me. I was just like, just working on a set like that was just so surreal, and and it just. I remember the, our premiere was just crazy. Like everybody was at our premiere, <laughs> like everybody. And I remember just thinking like, "Yo, this is wild." Like really, I'm not there yet, but I'm in it. Yeah, yeah. You know, I I was like, "Yo, I'm I'm in it. I'm really in it, and I could take it somewhere." And I think New Edition was the one that. Really doing a new edition story on BET really showed me like, oh, okay, people are supporting me. Like this now, this changed. People, yeah. The people recognizing you and stuff here and there, and that's when I'm like, oh, this is now. Now I got a, I got a, a deal of responsibility yeah, <laughs> to yeah. now because of this. But I would say like, straight out of Compton <laughs> mentally, because I was just like, whoa, and then like, new edition, I really seen it. Like, yeah, yeah. So like, straight out of Compton was kind of like, hey. I'm approaching the the next level, and then yeah, it was like an introduction. Edition was like, okay, I, I'm yeah. I'm arriving or arrived, you mm -hmm. know? Okay, cool, cool, yeah. yeah, yeah. Um, do they when you were on either you know when you were doing either of those, did you have any autonomy over like what you were gonna wear? I always wonder about that when it comes to like, um, you know your your character. Obviously, with New Edition, it's a time, it's a set piece, yeah. right? So it's a, a certain area. But I was just wondering, was there like you know like thinking about the wardrobe? Yeah, and, yeah. Oh yeah, for sure. I mean, straight out of Compton, like. I that was the one of the first things I was thinking about. I was like, "Yo, we finna get into like all the old school Los Angeles Raider gear, the Dodger gear, the yeah. you know, you got the hats, you got the 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 tees with the cat, like the all the LA vibe, yeah, like yeah. hell yeah." And then New Edition, of course. I mean, I was, you know, I, I was able to um, portray Ronnie. So once we got into the BBD era, yeah. it was like the overalls. It was <laughs> yeah, like yeah. you know just. All the crazy fits they had on. Did you have to dye your eyebrows for that? Yeah, okay, I did. I like, <laughs> well, so what we did was, um, it was like a they would shave my eyebrows. Okay, I was like sure shave, them shave them down and then, and then kind of like dye them to kind of like try to match my skin tone a little bit so they could kind of seem like faint. That's you know what I'm saying? You know what I'm saying? And that was crazy. That's that scared me. I'm not gonna lie. <laughs> I thought that my eyebrows wasn't gonna. Grow back, yeah, yeah. <laughs> but uh, that's not something you shave, right? Yeah, you shave I, I was scared, but we did it and it, it worked. But I, but I, man, the wardrobe for New Edition was like, and I was fire. And then getting to wear like the suits, yeah, yeah, or like the routines and stuff, and all the old school stuff. You seen um, we had O'Shea on the show, obviously, mm -hmm. or whatever. I'm not sure if you saw it or not. Yeah, yeah. But um, you all still get to collab on any other projects? Like, you know, how is it kind of working with them? Especially when we were talking about the Raiders gear. I see you're in all black right yeah. now. I like these. Yeah. Uh, 
What are well, these like, like flies you got going on? I got my tech me, fleece on. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> me and O'Shea, I mean, the only thing we did was straight out of Compton so far. That's when I met him. Yeah. And um, O'Shea is super cool. Really O'Shea cool. is like really yeah, he likes into the anime, like, for real. Yeah, hell yeah. <laughs> oh, he's like, really about it, for real. But like, <laughs> any love the Lakers, for real, for real. But yeah, I mean, like, O'Shea yeah, really yeah. like into like animation in general. Yeah. He's into like all the nostalgic stuff we grew up on, and he's very educated on it. And like that's just him on set. He's very cool. well spoken. Yeah, very, well, very spoken. well spoken. Super laid back, cool. And I just thought it was you know cool to meet O'Shea. Growing up, I was a big Ice Cube fan. You know yes. what I'm saying? <laughs> His pops is a legend. So. You know, this is a great segue. <laughs> yeah. Growing up, did you happen to see a movie uh, called You Know Bring It On? Yeah, for sure. <laughs> so I have to ask you, going into this. You know your uh, your Netflix film. You know uh -huh. working with Gabrielle Union yeah. was that weird or crazy for you? Because like, uh, I don't know about you, like me growing up. I mean, like she was like you know the you know the girl yeah. the, the 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 black woman. We were all like you know her and yeah, Megan Good. Like those were sure. like the women. You know, what yeah, I'm for sure. No, I think I think it, it is crazy because I I remember just growing up. That was like a movie that played a lot too in my household. It was just like Same. a couple of movies that just always played. But Bring It On was one of them. You know, my parents love that movie. Um, I grew up watching that Shrek, a couple of others. It was yeah, like a yeah. couple of like, like main movies it, we would just it felt always like it was play. always on TV, yeah. or always on. You know what I'm saying? But yeah, no, nah, it's definitely surreal. It's like I find out I'm doing a movie with her, and then it just it, I think about stuff like that, like, and it makes me think about we both had our long paths and just ended up here together in this moment, and it's just like, you know, it. It's always just surreal to me, but then it just showed me, like, you just never know what could happen in life until it happened. That's why you never really should doubt yourself or doubt that something can happen because it had just happened. But I think that I was just honored, and I was just, like, and scared as hell. I was just yeah. like, I don't want to mess up. I'm about to work with Gabby. Like, come and, on And now. it's kind of indicative, too, of the story, um, too, for those who don't know it. it you know, it's about a, a romance where one person's, you know, quite yeah. a bit older. Uh -huh. And it's kind of inverse because, you know, we see that a lot where it might be the man. Yeah, older, yeah. But it, in this case, it was the female that's yeah. older. Um, it's kind of indicative to what, what you're saying right now. The story, two no, people literally. Meeting at a, literally. At these crazy parts of their life. It's crazy. It's like you can't predict that type of stuff. You know what I'm saying? But... Um, I think that any time that I'm surprised by life, I always just kind of like step up to the plate and just get through it. I do have moments where I think about like, whoa, this is crazy. And I try to be present, but I, and that's what I got to work on. But when stuff like that happened, you know, I, that's funny you brought up bring it up. Cause that's the first thing I think <laughs> about when I'm like, yo, this is crazy. I'm working with Gabby, watched her and bring it on. Like, this is wild. And yeah. then this happened. It's just like, okay, now I, I got to do my thing. Which yeah, yeah, film. yeah. Like there's a this point where it flips, and you just gotta be professional and mm -hmm. and, and and handle your business. Right? Yeah, exactly. Um, but yeah, man. Um, question. You, you're gonna, you got a question. Is there a female artist or influence that you have that you might like want to work with, mm -hmm. or wish you can or had work with? That's a good question. At all? Yeah, like artists, like as far as like just somebody, actor, like an actor. Alien, or, I mean, does artist actor? Or artist in general? I mean, yeah. I mean, there's plenty, bro. Like I. It's so funny. I always, I really want to work with Jessica Chastain. Um, I don't know if you guys, mm -hmm. know Jessica Chastain, actress. I'm not gonna lie to you, I don't. She, well, she's <laughs> huge actress. Um, she was also one of the uh, starring leads in Interstellar. Um, Interstellar, okay, yeah, Molly's wait, Game. Um, I mean, I can name so many with Jessica Chastain. Oh, but, oh, 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 yeah. oh, her, yeah, yeah. She yeah. just did scenes um, from okay. Marriage with. Uh, I was like, I like I'm blanking on his name right now, but she, <laughs> yeah. did, she did scenes from from a marriage, but she's actually from Sacramento. Is she? Yeah, a lot of people don't know that. I feel actually, like I, oh, okay. yeah, 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 she's from Sac, and I, I, I really want to, I really want to work with her because I just love her talent. But I just think like she inspires me, just her personality off the screen as well. She just really connects with people really well. And I, same thing with like Greta Gerwig. Yeah, no, yeah, that was, that, was, no, that was tight. I'm all about my sack people. Yeah, so. yeah. 916, <laughs> what about, uh, you already know with that. What about yeah. on that same, in that, to go along with his question, what about any directors, you know? Oh, man, what? Nolan is my goat, Christopher Nolan. Yes, listen. That's yo. my favorite uh, filmmaker of all time. Really? That's yes. Definitely want to work with Spike Lee. Oh, um, of course. Yeah. I mean, just oh, go to course, go yeah. to a court in New York. I know, right? I know, <laughs> man, like Spike, got to work with Spike. Gotta like, that would be a dream. Um... Really love, uh, 
I really love it's so many I love. We really love Quentin Tarantino company. Come on now. Yes. I didn't want to say Tarantino that. I was gonna say heat. shout out Entourage too, but like I like <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I no, like, man. I mean it's so many directors, bro. Like I really love Catherine Bigelow. Um I could go on for days, but yeah. I know that Nolan is my GOAT. Oh man. I mean Memento, <clears throat> the Prestige, the Dark Pre- Knight. I can I mean, give you my top five movies, and three of them are Nolan films. Uh, okay. Dark, Dark Knight, um, uh, Inception, and Prestige are oh my on my God, top five. Yes. Those are great oh, movies. Just, Interstellar. I loved Oppenheimer, and it just dropped. Like, I just I feel like he just gets it really good. I, yeah. I just feel like he gets it, and he's just really good with story, and visually is just stunning. I mean, he'd he a goat to me. So if I could work with Christopher Nolan, that'd be a dream. The way he balances practical effects, I think, Makes yeah. it so you can keep your immersion. Like when you think about what they did for Inception, about building that whole tunnel, so that yeah, he, you know, like that, it didn't feel like oh, this person is they're just editing it to make it look like there's these guys are flipping around. No, really they're actually like, got a room that's rotating. Yeah, so. like the, I, yeah, just to to creatively create like a depiction like that of him kind of traveling through a dimension. Yes, and like and it all connected at the end with him hitting a book and yeah. his daughter like that. It's just different, man, to be able to, I wouldn't even say accurately, but to be able to, like, you know, really show that on screen and and create that and do it so well is always just extraordinary to me personally. I I 100% agree with you. So we're going to move on from your career a little bit uh, that we talked about a little bit. I'm sure we'll get more into it as we discuss the subject. I want to talk more about, you know, fashion and styles. Yeah, for sure. Uh, For we We've talked that you're, you know, sneakerhead as well what was the first sneaker that you felt like you needed to have you know what's crazy i i wouldn't even consider myself technically a sneakerhead mm-hmm. i just like what i like type of guy yeah. but when i do like a sneaker i buy the hell out of that <laughs> sneaker so like if i really love a sneaker like i'll try to get every colorway i'll wear it like crazy but the first sneaker i had to have I think the first sneaker I really had to have and I never got, and I still talk about it to the to this day, is the Yeezy uh, Red October. Yo, I think that. I what think size should you wear? I wear eleven. Bro, I'm telling about you, to give me Ace got no Ace got, <laughs> Ace got Ace got him for real. But yeah. I, I would say that's the I would truly say that's yeah. the first shoe where I felt like disappointed that I never got because mm. it was always other shoes like. But we was kind of my my parents did spoil us. Yeah, they yeah. stayed us. They my parents. Kept us in Jays. Kept y'all fresh. Kept y'all yeah, fresh so with. I was kind of like yeah. immune. To, I'm going to be real. I was kind of like immune to Jays to a certain extent. Because yeah. my mom and dad made sure we had Jays. Like, had yeah. the Space Jam. Had the Conkers. Had, like, we had all these kicks. And not saying that I took you, it for granted. Because yeah. I really thought it was dope to have my Jays. <laughs> yeah. But, bro, like, when the Red Octobers dropped, I was like, bro, these are hard. So that's like yes. your holy grail. Yeah, no, for nope. sure. Red October. I still talk about those. Yeah. Yes, no, I'm I'm with you too. We were yeah. just talking hey, about that last week. I was like, that's my, my was whole really? year. Yeah, I told it. I said, there's two pair of shoes. I want people ask me what are my favorite shoes. I said, as a child, the coolest pair of shoes that I ever saw was the um, the Air Mags. Yeah. The coolest pair of shoe that I ever saw as an adult was the Yeezy Red October oh. Twos, man. Like, or the Yeezy the uh, the Yeezy <clears throat> Twos. Like that's mm-hmm. that shoe was just special too. I mean. Just you know, Kanye, you can't even really you can't even really yeah. put it into words about like as a as a designer or creative like his impact on yeah. on these spaces. But you, it's just that shoe will stand the test of time. I think yeah, that's twenty years, thirty years from now, people will still think yeah. that's an all time great shoe. So. I, and I, I don't know if I was acting like a hype beast when those dropped, but all I know is that when I seen them, I was like, yo, I need <laughs> those, bro. But they were hella expensive when they dropped, and they were hard to get. Um, but yeah, those are the. Those are the ones. That's like that first one. Yeah. yeah. Being in the industry, you wear like a lot of designer shoes as well. Mm-hmm. You have like a certain yeah. kind of type that you like more than less versus not to like, you know. No, nah, yeah. No, nah, I think uh, being in the industry, I've learned more about designer shoes because I wasn't really into designer growing up like that. I was always just right. more into like streetwear, right. yeah. streetwear designer. Because I think streetwear is a designer too, honestly. I mean, that's that's high fashion as well. Too, man. I'm with I you. mean, the streets always is gonna always influence. <laughs> yeah, yeah, streets is going to always influence the, you know, the higher ups. But I just think like I don't I it's it's I love we talked about Balenciaga. I love Balenciaga. I love Prada. That was cool. Like you know what I'm saying? I love Prada shoes. Um but it's not and I love Louis. I love what Louis is doing and and has done in the past with with their kicks or with you know like their bags and stuff, but 
I mean, I just it's just kind of like I'm the type of guy I walk into a designer store and it's just like what I see is what I like and I don't really question it. I don't yeah. question like is this the right one to get? Yeah. Is it like it's just like, "Oh, okay. I would I would rather not spend that much, but if I if I got it and I walk in and I see it and I like it, you know, I want it." I like those OG Prada shoes, the ones that got like the patent leather on them. Yeah, There's I know what like you're talking about. Shirts. That was like a. I, really I don't even pop- know exactly what it's called, I but know those exactly are exactly what me. you're talking about. It's like it's like the shoe that crossed over from being just a product yes. thing to like people who are in a sneakers, especially yeah. among black culture. I know exactly which ones you're talking. about. I like they almost those. Look like Prada Stan Smiths. Exactly. I know exactly. I like what those you're a lot. Oh. So I mean, yeah, it's just I, I'm just always the type of guy. It's just like I always say, you know, like dress to express than to impress. Yeah. So whatever I'm getting is just like an expression of just how I'm feeling in that moment and how I feel about that particular shoe or whatever. So yeah. uh, we'll move on from then, since it's not specifically about brand. Like, where? How did your style develop? Because it, you know, yeah. a specific kind of style or to you. Yeah, I and just, has it changed from? Yeah. You know, transitioning from nine one six go kids yeah. to uh, <laughs> L A. Like just from when you've been here, from how you got here. Yeah. No, I think growing up, it was just more so like. Like, pop culture really inspiring me. Um, Of course, just growing up and just, you know, being into, like, what was going on in rap and watching Mm -hmm. a bunch of videos and stuff. And then mixing that, too, from where I'm from. So Yeah, exactly. (laughs) Any any specific inspirations, would you say? Yeah, yeah. So, well, first, Sacramento and, like, Northern California was, like, a big inspiration. I love this. And, like, you know, at a time. He's loving it because I've been bringing a lot of L.A. people. So he's like, yeah, yeah. Yeah, Yeah, so, like. (laughs) <laughs> it was like a mixture of like the hyphy movement, but also mixed with like what Atlanta had going on. So we was wearing like tall tees, <laughs> we was wearing like jabos, we was wearing all that, but yeah, then mixing yeah. it, you know, in Northern Cal- Cali, we is really on some like hippie urban streetwear yeah, type yeah. stuff where like we'll wear a hoodie, we'll have our vans on, we'll have like our, uh, we'll wear jabos as well, we'll have the tall tees. But I mean, like the specific people, I mean, Pharrell, of course, early yes. on was just like that was the holy grail of yes. inspiration. <laughs> like for real, like yeah. and even then, even now, bro. even he's now, up, bro. even now, yeah. and it's been, I remember right, exactly. going up though. Hey, it's, 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 it's fierce. Yes, uh, Lupe Fiasco. Yes, Lupe. Ego, and, bro. Yes. Yeah, even Ye was a big part. He of was that talking time about too. Goat Yard then. Exactly, like, that's crazy. That's crazy exactly. Like that's like <laughs> I always say. Pharrell is like I want the a Goat Yard passport. Now that you say that. And I think I when I moved to L.A. and I started being in the industry, I was traveling a lot. Yeah. So then that just opened up, you know, just the, my Luggage. mind and the way I looked yeah. at things. So, stuff that I wouldn't probably wore when I lived in Sacramento, I will wear now. Yeah, I try, yeah. I'll try stuff, like, and yeah. I'm not scared to. And I really, I just, honestly am very grateful for that because moving to L.A. really helped me to open up to more stuff yeah. because there's so many different type of people and it's so many like different stories and, and it's so many it, it you just get introduced to a lot you know what i'm saying and, and, and can i uh and you can correct me if i'm wrong but i feel like in sacramento what i one thing that i like it's like yeah. it don't matter what your ethnicity is yeah. they talk the same does that make sense yeah. like you be like you could be like <laughs> all sorts of whatever and bringing that up too when i was doing my little hyphy thing sacramento is different from the bay so like let's oh, address yeah, that sure, now sure. yeah yeah i mean yeah, we still sure. support northern yeah. california we're definitely still a said. part of the movement we're northern california sure. yeah but I, I feel like la is not like that like there is like trends and people following mm-hmm. trends and stuff but i feel like you might co- you might go to LA and speak to somebody from Texas right there mm-hmm. who has, who's wearing a cowboy hat and you know yeah. like I feel like you have a a, a, a lot, lot of, of mer- cowboy fans and like too. mercurial <laughs> yeah. you know lots of different <laughs> styles but I feel like that probably is helpful right going from Sacramento where it feels like a very strong community like very mm-hmm. like everyone's in in the midst of it but they're all yeah. into the same thing some somewhat yeah. versus LA kind of like you might you don't know what you're gonna see yeah but, because I mean but, LA is a big city too though and, you know it's like a melting pot. Of of course you got your people that's really from LA and then you got like the Hollywood transplants. Yeah. And then yeah. You got like yeah. you know what I'm saying? Yeah, and then yeah. LA is just a huge county. It's beauty in that too though. And then also LA always stays kind of traditionally itself. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? No matter how the time moves, like LA, LA is gonna be LA. Yeah. And it's yeah. just gonna be a little bit enhanced from that. But I mean, and that's the culture. And you always appreciate that um in that culture. So Yeah, some yeah. someone told me about LA, it's like what you make of it. Like it's oh, really 100%. Much, like he's like you want to find problems you gonna find problems exactly. you want to find success or money or whatever it's what you decide you want to find yeah. people who are trying to go the same direction as you 
You can find it. it just you never you make of it. You never can make excuses in LA about being trapped in a cycle because it's such a big city that you could get out of so that. So many cycle opportunities. Easily. There's That's so many so opportunities. There's so many people so to many, meet. Exactly. There's so many different pockets. If you're tired of going out in Hollywood, go to Silver Lake. You know yeah, what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah. If you don't want to go out in Silver Lake, you got Pasadena. <laughs> if you yeah. want to get some soul food and, and some food that remind you of home, don't try to find that in Hollywood. I mean, we got some places, yeah. but go to Crenshaw, go to yeah. Compton, or go to, go to Inglewood if you want Korean hey, food. Exactly. Go to Midtown. Go to K Town. K- speaking, speaking of that, you know, communities are like you know that's a LA based Sacramento. I know you do a lot of different things for the community. Yeah, uh, I've seen, you've done a couple of yoga things. You do good together. Yeah. I, do, I know you do a lot of public speaking. Mm-hmm. I know you've and things. I know you guys yeah. have sweet ones down here. Can you tell us a little bit about? Some of the yeah. Stuff do. yeah, so we created a collective and an activation called And Things. And really what it was was we wanted to throw events for people, especially black and brown people, people that look like us, throw these events that didn't feel like the same stuff, um, like clubs, the same clubs, the same. Or And, and we didn't want to – we wanted parties that felt easy to enter. Mm-hmm. Like it's like when you in L.A., and you want to go out. Sometimes it's extra when you want to go to the hot spots. Like, yeah. You got to know somebody. You got to have yeah. some money. You yeah. got to. It's just too much. You can't and wear br- black shoes. Exactly. Like, you can't wear and it's the same. Yeah. And it's the same. Yeah. Sacramento clubs are so strict, bro. Like it's. <laughs> they try to keep a certain crowd out in some clubs, and yeah. I don't care if they act like they don't. They do. Yeah. They'll say like a all black Converse is not okay, but like. These all black vans are okay today. It's just it's just so yeah, weird, no, yeah. right? And we just wanted to create something for the community where people could pull up and have a great time and not have to worry about the extras. You buy a ticket, that's your entry in. Nobody could take that away from you. Once you get in, you have fun, you meet people. We it's an even playing field. It's not about bottles and having sections and, and none yeah. of that. You know what I'm saying? You have good food. Exactly. You do yoga. The exactly. Yoga thing so is cool. yeah, and we also put on events that's more than just parties. We have yoga in the park. I was doing in Sacramento, and it was like dope to see like a lot of black people come out to the park, yeah, and, and old park of Sacramento, yeah. and like do yoga. And we had like a brunch. We wanted to create a brunch culture in Sacramento, so we was doing brunches at Tiger, and that was just really to just get people to pull up on a Sunday before twelve, and then like listen to some great music, but then also eat some really good food and converse and break bread with people and meet and connect and network, and um. Our goal is to, of course, give back more, like, you know, back to school, give backs. We want to do, like, you know, we want to donate bicycles. It's so many plans we have, um, but that's why we created Ant Things, and the name comes from just, you know, just the the, the, the lingo in Sacramento. So, like, for example, if if, if <laughs> I'm in SAC and I'm like, yo, I'm trying to go get some food, we, we got fixings in SAC. Of course, it's out yeah, here fixes. now. We'd be like, yo, yeah. I'm about to go to fi- get some fixings and things. You yeah. know? Yeah. <laughs> like, so. Con- we got like, the, we yeah. and things, right? Yeah. yeah. Like, okay, okay. Yeah. I was yeah. like, so I'm not from SAC, so I got to understand. Yeah. You, you put it's me on game somewhat right Somewhat like that, yeah. Right so, now. that's where the name came from. And, like, it, we're really just about building community. Um, and we did it. We even did like an art gallery in LA where we, we hosted like three artists. Shout out to Rach. Yeah, 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 yeah. Rachel <laughs> Shout was out to part Rach. of that. Shout out to Rachel. <laughs> Shout out to Rach. I don't know. Yeah, Rach. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Shout out to her. Um, art we, ain't free. Yeah, art ain't art free. Ain't free. Yeah. <laughs> we set up a, we set up a, a, just, we had a space, a studio, had three artists and then we hosted them. We had music, we had drinks and we had people come and they bought art and just kicked it and just listened to some good music or if you just wanted to just look at the art, but it, it meant everything in the world to us that they actually bought. I like People the guys that print are like subtle and sexy. Yeah, it's yeah. Like, it's just like and then, light, but still enough to where, you know, it's no no phones. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You can have your phone out. Yeah, no, <laughs> no, for sure. And then and then we started an R&B activation called Sweet One out here in L.A. And we do it monthly at Los Globos. And that's been really fun. Are we that pro- shit was slapping. He's playing, bro. That's, <laughs> I was there at that one. I was there, bro. Yeah, the we, when I was, yeah, yeah it's I fun. I be trying to get on camera every time I got him on one of these, bro. It's dope. It's fun. It's I like have to pull up to the next yeah, one. No, nah, you got to. We prioritize R and B, and whether it's modern R and B or it's like older R and B. And then you know we throw some rap in there because you got to keep yeah, the crowd yeah, up. Yeah. You, you can't listen to R and B yeah. straight for too long. You listen to R and B for too long, you are gonna be calling. You know, like, yeah, exactly, oh, I right? You. right. <laughs> like, yeah, everybody gonna be in their feelings. But yeah, no. So that's what we got with and things and sweet one is under and things. It's just one of our activations under the umbrella. But yeah, it's been a great thing. It's fun. We've been connecting. People have been meeting each other like through our parties and stuff, and just like creating relationships from the parties. And that's our goal. We just want to build yeah. community. And just keep extending and 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 having, being that place for people to come to. It's cool to see the growth from yeah. that. You know, starting from like this, yeah. growing from like you know it's just from starting fast. Sack and then going to LA. Like, where yeah. y'all thinking about going next? 
I should go to Man, we want to go to Atlanta, New York. Oh. We want to go to London. We got, we London. got big plans. That's, yeah. That's, well, okay. Okay. Yeah. 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 We got, we got big plans. Yeah. And I think okay. we're cool, going cool. for sure do it. It's just about you know, continuing to stay consistent. Or, or, I like it. I like it. We'll stay locked in with it for sure. We're gonna take a little bit yeah. of break here, but when we come back, more culture vultures. Appreciate you, Keith. Yeah. Hey everyone, I'm Neko Gumake with the LA Sparks, and you are watching Infinity Television. <laughs> A podcast for the fans, by the fans. Dive deep into the topics the other shows miss, raw and uncensored. And he's going to play team ball. His legacy is at stake. Rare, hard-hitting interviews with players, coaches, and you, the super fans. I'm not hating. I'm like, okay, cool. Good. Three championships in five years. He's more than good, bro. Profanity Nation. Listen live or subscribe on your favorite podcast platform. What's up, y'all? It's your girl, Chanel Gwimike, and you're watching Infanity Television. Boom. Shout out Infanity Television. This is Juju Watkins. See y'all. I don't think there's going to ever be a more iconic cast of villains than, like, the Akatsuki. It's like them yeah, and no. then the Phantom Troop. Are you a Hunter Hunter? I, you know, Hunter Hunter, I just can't. It don't grab my love. It don't it don't it don't grab me like a Did you like I need it to. No, I no, I can't. I mean it's good. That and uh uh hot take. My hero academia, bro. What? I like my hero. I ain't myself, never been bro. so on and off with an anime because, in my yeah. life. <laughs> like, like that girl you, you I, used to date in high school. Bro, if you don't <laughs> leave me alone, like, like I watch it and I'm into it. I'm like, okay, all right. And then, and then, they, then yeah, like, like bro, first of all, when I first started watching the show. The fact that everybody got three names is killing me because like Midoriya is also Deku is and also, Izuku. yeah. <laughs> so I'm like, wait, who are you talking about? Oh, he's talking about him. And like trying to keep up with that. Plus my damn Midoriya is always crying. Yeah. Like, bro, you yeah, so whiny. Too. Hey, Bakugo, oh, Bakugo is a, is a, is a nice so, character, dog. So, but yeah, because yeah. that's Kachan. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Kachan. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> no, but the cool thing about Bakugo is like, you really like why is he like this? Yeah. And then when they fight and he spoiler alert, yeah, and yeah. He, and he beats him, and you're like, you can't be losing to me. Like, like that you, you understood his char character finally before it was just like this two-dimensional thing. So I'll say this: the thing that I think makes that series special is the the villain, the way that certain characters impact the series. Like what's his name? Stain. Well, Stain is my favorite character. Stain, yeah, Stain, Stain is awesome. And Stain is the reason that the heroes, I mean, the villains are even want to be grouped together. And he also at the end, yeah. Yeah, you I don't know, know so, nothing, no, no, bro. I'm, Everything that draws me back to the show is because I accidentally see a spoiler on TikTok and I'm right. like, why don't I watch my hero more? And then I watch <laughs> my Carter. hero and I'm like, <laughs> oh, yeah, I remember. All right. I gotta, I re when I, when I, when we, when they introduced Lamelia, pissed me off. <laughs> So I'm you like, be naked. it should have been, first of all, first of all, power. it obviously should have been him. Yes. It should. obviously should have been this kid. Yeah, he would have been unstoppable. And then, bro, and then I, I saw a tweet. Somebody said, my hero would be a, a much better show if Midoriya didn't exist. 
because you know who the number one guy is going to be. Right. And so I'm like, spoiler. All right, we're back. So let's, uh, you know, move on to our, our uh, next subjects here. I wanted to ask, you know, um, as far <laughs> as, um, you know, any upcoming uh, projects, right? I know that there's not much that you can really say about yeah. it, but, you know, what what you got going on? You know, coming up soon here. Yeah, I mean, um, I posted it before, so I've, I've I'm one of the leads in Netflix uh, film The Uglies. It's a book adaption. Uh, Joey King, Chase Stokes, Laverne Cox, and a bunch of other amazing talents. So that's coming. Um, we don't have an official date yet. But that's gonna be on Netflix, hopefully. You know, this summer, and then. Um, and they're keeping the casting yeah. tight lit, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Got to keep it. They don't, you know, because it's, it's based off a book, and, and you know, just want to surprise the the core fan base. And, yeah, the book people, they're yeah. really like, yeah. oh, you know, I that, they be they be figuring out the ca or trying they to do. figure out the casting or like casting themselves mm -hmm. who they want in that yeah, role yeah. before and it ever even you know they do not play. So I got that coming, and then I um I just booked a, a television show that I can't say yet, yeah. but um. I gotta go shoot in Chicago soon, a couple episodes. So I got some stuff coming. Okay, so cool, cool. So yeah. do you ever get to go to the Netflix building? Yeah, I've been there. I, I like that building. I yeah, was just nice wondering because, like, you know, I just seen Dave Chappelle came with that new special. I'm like, bro, does he still walk in there? Like, yeah, no, nah, it's cool know? walking in the Netflix building. It's like, especially when you meet people and you know people, it, it's just dope to be in there. I mean, it's it's a nice office and they new. You know, Netflix is yeah, you know, yeah. on they on they on they doing their thing. So like the, the offices are new. And, you know, I know a couple of execs there and stuff, so yeah, it's always man. dope to walk through there. Tell the execs so, they should they should pick up a couple podcasts. <laughs> uh, question: Let me ask you this. They should. <laughs> yeah, right. I, I, I agree with that. I agree with that sentiment yeah. right here. Co-signed right here. No, uh, is there? Is, I want to ask you: Is there any specific role, or um, you know, let's say, is there any specific role that's challenged you a lot? I know uh, infamously that you know when you guys did the you know the 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 um oh my goodness new edition new edition movie sorry <clears throat> struggling right now with, okay. with words uh yeah. that you got nobody could, could dance i heard except for one <laughs> well yeah i mean <laughs> yeah, i mean it was one there was, yeah i mean woody was i was about to say woody, woody, woody was, was yeah, nice. <laughs> woody was official i mean he 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 had danced for, like for chris before yeah he he knew how to how to dance but i mean all of not all of us knew how to sing and it was a couple, bunch of us yeah. I wasn't one of the singers, but it was yeah. a bunch of people in our cast who already were amazing singers. Lou yeah, was, that was Lou that was great. Yeah, thank yeah, you. you. Nah, it was Luke, Lou is the man, bro. Yeah, oh yeah, Luke. Luke he, bro, he I thought you said the movie was great. No, nah, Luke no, is amazing. Luke, Luke, he's a talented. Bro. Oh my god, he's like, one of the best. That is a talented. Ever. Both bro. things are true, by the way. Well, yeah, yeah, yeah. the movie was great too, but like, yeah, I was thank you. I had said Luke. That was that was that was the most challenging for sure. That was really challenging. Could you sing? Um, no. No, I can't. Oh, I had to. I had to. I still had to go and record. Actually, was was interesting about shoot new edition. We still had to like. I still had to go in and record with Jimmy Jam and Terry Lewis. Like I had to go re-record some of the How records. Like, oh, that was one of the most scariest things ever because I, I don't like, sing. But of like, course, uh, you know, <laughs> Ronnie is a big part of the group and one of the best dancers, if not actually the best dancer of the group. But like, he wasn't like the. Sh particularly the strongest vocalist, but like yeah, yeah. I still had to, he still sung on the records. He still sung on like the BBD records and yeah. rapped on them and, and sung in all the records before did background. So like we had to do that too. And I was like really stressful, but it was, it was the choreography was the hardest. I think that that was just like, that was tough. I had to learn like five um, dance routines in like three weeks before. Oh. Or I like two and a half weeks, and that was like stressful. What, oh, I was literally weird. waking up out of my sleep doing dance moves. <laughs> like I had nightmares about them dance moves. That's all I thought about, and I would yeah. do them like getting ready for the day, like brushing my teeth in the morning <laughs> yeah. in the bathroom, like practicing steps. So that was like the the toughest. But that was because I had more to worry about than just the yeah. acting. I had yeah. to worry about like you know the dancing and getting the essence of Ronnie and how he danced and stuff, but. I think acting in general, bro, I think every single role yeah. brings its own challenge. It's so tough. I'm going to be real. Yeah, <laughs> it's yeah, so hard. Yeah. It's, 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 it's hard. You have to really, like, it's lock life, in. Right? It's like yeah. your life during, that, during those filming times. Right? You got you got to really lock in. And it, and it teaches you about who you are in real life. You know what I'm saying? You put yourself in someone else's shoes and experience what they experience. And it make you think, like, oh, like, 
maybe I, I, I didn't know. I, I haven't, I'm not the most affectionate person. Then I got to be super affectionate in the scene. Yeah, you know what yeah, I'm saying? Yeah. Like stuff like that. Yeah, it challenges you. Zone, right? Yeah. It challenges you yeah, as a damn. person to experience certain emotions that you probably don't even experience in real life. It's crazy. So it's tough, but it's dope. Character wise. Mm -hmm. What's one of the, like, what's one of the hardest characters you feel like you had to portray like that? I mean, Ronnie was tough, but I mean, like I said, all of them is really tough, bro. Like it's, what they you, all bring their own different challenge. Um, what do you but, do for like preparation? You lock yourself in a room or something? Nah, <laughs> nah, nah. It, I haven't had to do a project that requires me to, Method yeah, go that extreme yet. Um, I think I'll never go extreme to the point where it affects my personal life. Yeah. Um, I don't think I don't think that I'll ever do that, but. Unless, unless, you know, you never know. Yeah, <laughs> it's never always. Yeah, 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 man, hold yeah. on. Christopher Nolan might hit yeah, you up. Bro. Yeah, I'm going yeah, to yeah, get right. Uh, yeah, yeah, like, I need Nolan. you to play homeless, man. We're going to need yeah. you to be homeless for two weeks. Nah, <laughs> fact, yeah, nah, I mean, it's like, it, it's, it's, they all have run their, 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 their personal challenge. It's not easy. Um, so I, w I wouldn't even have one in particular, but I, I will say that that new edition one was really hard because I had to learn. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So, I mean, I do you still dance? And, and choreography I mean, yeah. dancing's different okay, than so like, you need like I don't one-two step, right? Yeah, exactly. Wait, yeah. wait, bro. I'll be seeing you dancing sometimes. No, I mean, I dance. <laughs> I do a little two step, but like, as far as like the routines, like, yeah, that's different. I would need like, I would, need, <laughs> I would need somebody to refresh my memory because once we got done with that, and then we did the BET show, like, yeah. oh yeah, yeah, we yeah brought well. everybody together. I was like, all right, <laughs> I'm good. Like that was yeah. stressful, but it was it was fun. It was one of the most beautiful experiences of my life. And I'm glad I went through that. And I'm, and yeah. It's a perfect segue too, because you know we're talking about you know obviously culture vultures part of the, being mm -hmm. a part of the culture, uh, especially within Black culture, uh, music and music biopics are a big part of it. You oh, know, yeah. I felt like especially growing up, movie like the the um, Michael Jackson movie or yep. the Temptations movie. Mm -hmm. Shoot. The Five Heartbeats movie. <laughs> yeah, I know. Even though that's not, you know, Bro, that's right. like still, but we, Literally. We, we talk about it like it was like, you know, I know. it was a, a biopic, right? <laughs> yeah. Um, I wanted to know what was your favorite one growing up? Uh, my favorite one growing up, I mean, all those you named, of course. Yeah. Um, I mean, those, if it wasn't for those, it wouldn't be a new edition yeah, yeah. story. You know what I'm saying? They they opened the door for, you know, black, bio, black musical biopics um, later on. But I think the one that really hit me. The hardest was Ray. I thought Jamie <laughs> really? and Ray, yeah. That is a good Jamie one. Jamie and Ray was like. I that one. I, mean, Jamie, no, I think Jamie and Ray is one of the most accurate depictions I've ever seen of anybody in any genre, any race play a musician. Like, I thought that he was so on point, dude. Like, I mean, he even sang Jamie, like him. Yeah, he could actually ja sing like an yeah, impression. Man. You know, that's that's like one of my favorite performances of all time. I thought that Ray was really good. I mean, that movie made me cry, made me yeah. laugh, made me dance, made me sing. I, it was just what, everything that I ever wanted in, like, a musical biopic. So I'll say that was, like, the one. Yeah. And I'll say, you know, it's so funny. I'll also say Selena was crazy. Bro. Yo, <laughs> yes. hey, no, that. Well, yeah, J-Lo killed mean, Selena. Yeah, like, that was man. fire, dude. Like, I mean, I've been quoting that since I, anything for Selena. Everybody yeah. quotes, you know what I'm saying? All those. That one, was yeah. a, that was a good one. That was a really what was your, good what one. What was yours? What's, your, what's the bio pick yeah. you like? Well, damn, no, I just wasn't ready to like, <laughs> put you, have to put you on spot. Right? Like, I don't put you on spot. I, I don't know. Like, I mean, I'm going to tell you something stupid, like the history of trunks. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, <laughs> no, no, no. I'll give no, you mine then. I'll give you mine then while you figure out yours. I don't, I don't, I really don't have one. Oh, fair enough. It's like, Mine's always the Temptation deep. movie. Growing up, Temptations I was, was tight, you know, man. Motown was what my I was raised on, listening mm -hmm. to, you know, on the radio. We listened to the the old school stuff, um, you know, station. So when that movie came out, I just remember it being like a cultural moment, and like actually sitting in front of the TV. We didn't have you know TiVo back then where you can yeah. record it and watch it later. You had to be there at the time when the movie, and it was in two parts. It was a three hour one. Yeah, so, it was. And I feel like you know I, I use that as a segue to say I feel like you know. Uh, the new edition movie is in that pantheon now. You know, where do you sure. feel like it sits there and the impact it's at? I mean, I think it's has I think it's up there pretty high, but I mean I think even Strata Compton Strata Compton yeah. is up there pretty high too. I think yeah, Strata like, bro, Compton I'm over here is thinking like I'm going through it. I'm like, yeah. well bro, I wanna I wanna say a good one. I don't want to I don't wanna like, put an actual ranking yeah, on the yeah, new yeah, edition. Like, like, but I will say it's in the top tier for sure. I think that and I think that it, it deserved even more of you and love. From 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 you know the world universally, but I, I really love. I mean, and it did receive love, but I really loved how like our people really 
came out for that. And yeah, and it still had like a slow boomerang effect even after like yeah, to, even to this day. Yeah. People like still reference and it, and it helps us work wise and everything and it's kind of like too like just like the movie i feel like new edition specifically is like really special amongst the black community like oh 100%. it's a group that like and that low-key it, catapulted that it's like for as a group yeah. for us like you know what i'm saying like yeah it's, like, I mean, it's, new like, edition. it's not for it wasn't made like for, yeah it was for us it was a group for us like yeah and new know? edition i mean new edition as a group in general is just i believe is one of the top groups of all time i mean and they it's so dope to see them still be able to tour to this day, right now, and I think it's just the most beautiful thing. And I think that the New Edition story kind of helped. You know, New Edition, I feel like, has always gotten the love, but the New Edition story just, you know, even just revamped the love and, and, and brought the new younger generation on yeah, board yeah. and had them, you know, be even fans included, as well. Yeah, yeah like, and learning that's, about just it's dope culture. to see. <laughs> yeah, it's dope to see New Edition just get their flowers and they all still be here healthy. And, and even people beyond New Edition yeah. through that, too. Yeah, yeah like... like I, uh, that's younger. that's true like the edu that's part of educating too like people you, you they didn't even know about it once the, your depiction of your character you yeah. know what i'm saying helps them to see them th through a different light i have um we do have question from uh you know we a asked our audience you know um if they had any questions for you we're going to get to that but i wanted to ask you um when you were preparing the last thing i want to ask you about this uh the new edition uh role is when you were preparing for that um what did you was there anything specific that you did to try and like get down your characters yeah um you know attributes and yeah 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 like the whole essence of i mean one thing that uh, our production did and jesse collins the bet they did a really good job of um giving us like you know folders of our characters they gave us like a cd they gave us folders and and just like facts about our characters and that was like really the starting point and then also just like references on youtube to go to and you know i had to like you know, create, like, I had to get down, like, Ronnie's accent, you know, yeah. they're all from Boston, so, like, really had to tap into, like, the Boston accent, and even, like, the essence, yeah. so that was really important, but I think, I think our production did a really good job at preparing us and giving us that booklet, and actually having to spend time with each other, our chemistry was really good, because all of us was, like, actually friends, so. That's cool. Yeah. Yeah, I think that, that probably helps a lot. Oh, my God. And you, like, in a scene, acting with your friends. where you don't. Where you don't have to do that, or where you yeah. don't have the opportunity to do it. Exactly. So oh, it's, like, it's a lot of films where you don't have a lot of opportunities. Some some actors don't want to meet who they're working with. They're yeah. very introverted, and that's okay, but it does make it like hard sometimes because y'all might not connect until the director yell action yeah, yeah. or in rehearsal, and that's crazy, but that's just how I be. I remember Damn. you were saying when you did that interview that. like about uh, for Perfect Fine that you... Like the first scene that you had to to, to shoot was like yeah, it was an intimate scene. An intimate yeah. scene. Like imagine just going straight to yeah. Like, oh, nice first to day, you. first scene. You know, like me and Gabby had to like shoot just talking like in the bed. Like it's just intimate. It was like an intimate day, and like that was the first day. And like, how do you prep for that? You know what I'm saying? Yeah. You don't. You can't really prep for it. But um, of course, the the set handled it really well. We had an intimacy coach, and before that, we the only time that me and Gabby really got to get into you know like reading together was uh, the table read, yeah. and that was when I got to New York. So that's just how it is in our job, you know? You yeah. just try to find ways to connect, and it is hard sometimes, and every job is just different. Yeah. <laughs> like, it's never it's never the same. Yeah, I mean, It's that, never the same. It sounds like it has, it, it's like one of those things where it's like a, like working out like a beautiful pain, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, like, exactly, yeah. no, 100%. That's a perfect example. That's literally what it is. That's it's, a good question. Health-wise, like, are you like eating, working out, and stuff? Like, do you got like a schedule you oh, stick to? You do that by yourself? I mean, yeah, I work out every day with my with my trainer Rob. We work out from Monday to Friday. If he can't get, you know, over to where I'm at to work out with me, he'll just send the workout. Right. And but I'm not like on a strict diet. I just like to just stay active. And I, you know, I put myself on strict diets here and there. If I if it's a project where I feel like you know I need to focus on my diet or put on some weight. You just adjust accordingly. But I think it's good to just stay in the gym. So when that day come where studio is like, yo, we need you to put on this much weight or <clears throat> get this toned up in, in this yeah, amount of yeah. time, I'm already in the gym. So, like, it's really just about just switching the, the regimen up rather than just, like, coming straight off the couch and be like, ugh, yeah, yeah, yeah. this first week yeah. is about to be tough. <laughs> like, ain't nothing worse than that first week again. That's all. If you get through that first week, you're going to be all right. But As somebody who has 
been in and out of the gym through various times in my life where I was going hard for you Are you know, going hard right now? Time. Bro, he got a he bought a bunch of Kobe's. Got lucky with a bunch of Kobe's and he just be going to the gym. <laughs> yeah, that's all I'm Fire. doing right now, man. Like, I've been going hard for, but, for what? But that but that, <laughs> and, and that what, first Devin week. Booker's in the uh what is it the the Anthony Edwards. Oh yeah, I've been oh, yeah. those too. Yeah. What you mean you like the Anthony Edwards? I thought yeah. they was cool. You wear Adidas like like to hoop I do I do oh, nah, but you know I'm not a hooper like that. Yeah, hey, <laughs> hey, 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 I'll be shifting whatever whatever sport you ask. I'm gonna say a different sport. Ah, no, facts. <laughs> oh, oh, no, I'm a soccer player. <laughs> yeah, no, for real. No, no, but um, before we close out, man, I want to say thank you for um, you know, coming on and uh, spending time with us today. I have a question oh, from one of our followers. She's a big fan of yours. Um, mm-hmm. This is from at Amani with two ends right. She says to ask you. How being from Sacramento influenced your work? <clears throat> That's a great question, actually. It it influenced my work ethic a lot. And I just think, really, it just started from playing sports growing up. I always say, like, a football team really reminds me of being on a set. There's so many moving parts for a football team to succeed. And I think it's the same way for a movie set. And I think any team sport that requires teammates, you know, you got to have a team that works together. I mean, that's just in any sport. But I think football is like the one of the top sports where you really yeah. need to be on one accord. And um, I think growing up playing football really helped me with my work ethic because it just taught me discipline and just life skills that I'm going to just take for with me forever. And every time I think about stuff like that, it always makes me like, because, you know, growing up, my dream was like to play in the NFL. Yeah. Like, yeah. <laughs> you know, we always had these, these crazy big dreams. And I... And that was it. I was like, nobody could tell me that I wasn't going to play in the NFL. <laughs> yeah. And I just thought, like, I just thought that was it, right? And I wasn't even doing the right things to even yeah, get yeah, in there. Yeah. But you just, you just, you cre- just yeah, you, you create yeah. these, you create the dream in your head. Nobody could stop you. And I will say, like, looking back, I'm like, oh, I get why I grew up playing sports. Yeah, yeah. It taught me life skills. It taught me how to work with people. It taught me how to collab. It taught me how to communicate. Yeah. with people I'm working with. It taught me how to sacrifice for the people I'm working with. And I think that all comes from playing Pop Warner in Sacramento yeah. and then having those values in Sacramento and then playing on a Pop Warner team in Sac and how, like, you grow up with your friends and then their parents become your parents. So if your parent yeah. ain't there, Off they top. can talk to Everybody you a certain way. So yeah, all, that go, yeah. all that go hand Free in hand. Game, and, yeah. like, Sacramento is, like, just like any other, I wouldn't even consider Sac technically like a small town, but it's smaller than LA. But any city like that, it's a great place to raise like, a family. Exactly, you know, have a exactly like, when you have a smaller community, what like happens is, <laughs> yeah, that that community really that work ethic is there because we we dreaming our dreams is like so. I remember thinking about LA like Mars, bro. Like, <laughs> it was like, like yo, movie. like only time I was going to LA at the time was like to go to Disneyland, and then being in Disneyland as a kid is like, yo, and then <laughs> yes. being in LA and seeing the palm trees and seeing Hollywood, it's like, yo. So when you see that and experience just that, you go back home and you like, yo, like I know if I want to get to that, I gotta put in hella work because I'm not growing <laughs> up. In that in that city, and even the people that do grow up in that city, it's people who stay in Compton, Inglewood, that never go to Hollywood. You know what I'm never. saying? So, if it's like that already out here, imagine how we looking at it yeah. from our town. So it feels so much more like a, a distant a pipe dream. Exactly. So I just think that work ethic is just it's like generational. Like I mean, of course, everybody don't have crazy work. Ethic. Everyone's work ethic is different, but I just think it's generational. <laughs> like yeah. it's like passed down to us. So Man. I think that is it's a big. Sacramento play a big part in like my work at, work ethic, but it was it was just sports also being that. Yeah. that thing, yeah. Well, thank you, Amani, for your question. That was a great question. We appreciate question. that, um, yeah. and it gave us such a thought provoking answer, man. I'm I'm you know I leave here you know being more inspired by your work ethic and you know what you've done. I, um, we're really appreciative of you coming on here. I appreciate y'all. Speed, man, you got man. any uh, f- you know closing words before we? Man, nah, bro. Thank you for pulling yeah, up, bro. Nine one six. You know what it is? Go Kings, like the beam. 
Yeah, yeah. Oh yeah, super, <laughs> nah, super yeah. nine one six. Super nine one six Sacramento Kings fan over here for real. <laughs> nah, it's cool. It's yeah. cool to have you out, man. I appreciate you. You know, just blessing us. You always helping the community out, helping. Oh, the was you trying to shake my hand? <laughs> Yo, it just hit me. It just hit me that you went like this, and I was like, wait, what happened? My bad. It was good. I got. I that's got the me. classic. That's the classic when somebody <laughs> leave you hanging. It's like I, I, it's like I got me. I got, you got me. I got me. <laughs> No, it's, bad, like, it's been a good time though, bro. Yeah, Seriously, nah. straight up. Thank you for, for taking time out of your day. Mm -hmm. um, the last real question I had was about the Balenciaga thing. So I, you were sitting next to some cool people, bro. Like, what's yeah. that like when you just gotta go sit down in the middle? You in the front, bro. It's like you just they just walk by. And just, they your peers, you know. I look at it like these are my peers, and I just respect my peers' space. And bro, I remember you when you first came out here, and you're like. I just, it was so different. Now you're just, it's just so cool, bro, to see, like, I the guess growth, bro. It helped me, and L.A. really helped me grow. Bro, you're, like, you're so humble about it, bro. You're so, like, you're a good person about that. So that's, that's really dope, that, bro. So. And, and it's just, I, I just think it's dope, too, just you guys having that, you know, connection going back. Because I was look at that, like. Oh, shout out to E Nasty. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I was looking at that, pic, that, that Virgil picture with, like, that epic one with, like, Kanye and yeah. all of them and Don in that picture. And you're like, yo, this that was the moment. Like they, this was before they made it, yeah. and then all of a sudden they arrived. Know. You know what I'm saying? So it's cool seeing how your people's lives interconnect, and you know, yeah. hopefully we all reach that level two here. You yeah, know what I'm yeah. saying? But, nah, for sure. But you're you're uh you know you're grinding your hustle, man. Like I said, it's inspiring. Man. I can't wait to see what you do next. Man. Thank you, man. I Looking forward it. to the future projects, man. Thank y'all. And you guys appreciate can follow you. us, uh, Darren. What's yours? Um, uh, it is at the pettiest LA. I was, I was thinking about uh, at the pettiest LA on all platforms. Where can they find you at? I'm just at Keith Powers on all all platforms. And I'm at AYE dot speed on all most platforms. <laughs> yeah. And of course, follow Culture Vultures. Yeah, follow uh, Culture Vultures. Culture Thank you guys Vultures. for the yeah. day. Have a good night. Over and out, y'all. All right, y'all. <laughs>